Professor Cherian is a practicing archaeologist and the founding director of the Kerala Council for Historical Research, which he served from 2001 to 2016. The Patanam excavations were done under his directorship as part of the larger Muziris Heritage Project. Muziris was known in Tamaragam as Muchiri Patanam, a port site equivalent to modern New York, London or Shanghai, the pride of ancient Tamil culture and the queen of the oceans 2,000 years ago. This lost city was brought to light in the 21st century through the Patanam excavations. The research institute Mr. Cherian represents today, Pama, is engaged in a project rediscovering ancient Tamaragam. Mr. Cherian was a curator of the exhibition Unearthing Patnam, Histories, Cultures, Crossings at the National Museum New Delhi in 2014. Professor Cherian. Oh, honorable dignitaries on the dais and of the dais, ladies and gentlemen. You know, coming from Kerala to Tamil Nadu in modern times, I always used to feel that I am coming to my ancestral family. In a way, I am from the ancient Cheranadu to greet my cousin brother, R. Balakrishnan, for undertaking this strenuous journey. Journey of a civilization from Indus to Vaigai. He was in fact undertaking a voyage from ancient Tamilagam to her deeper roots. Taking the freedom of a teacher and maybe following the footstep of one of my favorite Indrigi characters, Aravana Adigal, the sage of wisdom portrayed by Shatanar in Mani Mekhalai, I embrace our Balakrishnan on behalf of my ancient ancestors from Cheranadu. Our Balakrishnan is a blessed intellectual. Also, I invoked a Ramana article because I always used to be an intellectual, an academic, a professional. So ultimately, if he has a model in mind, Aramana Adigal could be the kind of person. You know, he was so silent. He was so blessed. He was so pleasant. But he was one responsible for making drastic changes in the society through some people. In this case, through Madi Mekhalai. Anyhow, to me, for Balakrishnan, from an academic point of view, sustained two aspects. One is a child's curiosity, and the other is absolute dedication and perspective of a transdisciplinary researcher to achieve this kind of a rare feat. In spite of being tied up with us, you have already heard a busy career of a civil servant. He was committed to sustain and enrich both his curiosity and the methodological rigor of an evidence-based research, researcher. You know, I had the great privilege of writing the foreword of this book. Now I was feeling a little guilty that I should have given more time in understanding this great work because they were always in a hurry. Anyhow, this is a great privilege and I am not going to repeat what I have written as the foreword. Instead, I thought I should briefly say something probably totally different. That is, this book indirectly is addressing that is about two sorts of imprisonments. One I should term as a monodisciplinary confinement, and the other is boy being locked in the immediate present. This I consider 
as the positive contribution of Balakrishnan's book to the higher education realm as well as to our internal refinement towards a balanced worldview. In spite of the drastic changes taking place in the school curriculum, our higher education continues to be in the colonial or Eurocentric mode. They are framed in monodisciplinary patterns. Distressingly, even at the level of higher education, higher research, it is a sort of disciplinary confinement. Research happens in our universities in the mechanics of each discipline enforcing its narrow goals and methods. The monodisciplinary system is not very far different from our caste system as they forbid intellectual mobility or what I may say as transcendence. The faculty and students associated with different disciplines practice their academic pursuits with little idea of what is happening at the next door academic department. The consequence is borderless knowledge remains artificially fragmented. The liberative goal or social relevance of knowledge creation is therefore curtailed. We tend to forget that the problems of life or the theory or the society of life or the society are not created nor can be solved through monodisciplinary approaches. Think of the best creative minds in, our, in any domain of human activity or knowledge. None of them were prisoners of any particular discipline. I think Balakrishnan in his entire kind of penance in doing this work was always in a transcendence of reaching out for the borderless knowledge or whatever we call it. Let me also share an experience briefly what I experienced in Oxford. You know, in Oxford, DPhil students are admitted from almost all disciplines belong, whether they belong to humanities, sciences, or social sciences. So I used to wonder what is this happening. About 30 plus DPhil students were there. They are called DPhil because here it is called PhD. So one student was with me who was from China. I asked her, you know, I came to know that she had masters in journalism, but still she is in archaeology. So I asked her how you managed your admission. She told me I had two publications. Being a teacher, I was good enough to go through it. Yes, she has done a one-year break of uh, journalism and did two papers on it. So I was asking the senior people in the School of Archaeology, what is the procedure? One of them said, Charyan, this is full of confusion here. Sometimes we manage things. So we don't want to limit anyone coming to this discipline. And in between the lines, what they said was, science is the fundamental, basic thing we are looking for students coming from various disciplines. And they have also facilities for providing additional support to teach or learn the fundamentals of archaeology. See, this I mentioned because that this work will tell you how important is this transdisciplinary approach in bringing out creative knowledge domains. See, another imprisonment what I just want to mention is about the story of Malayalis who lost their touch with Tamilagam or their, their, their Ravidian past. With Kerala's modernity, ex modernity experience under the colonial gaze, Malayalis started distancing them from their deeper cultural roots 
and constructed a history that began only in the 9th century. Everything before that was perceived and constructed as dark age or primitive. With very few exceptions like Professor Elangkulang Kunyan Pillai, most of the modern researchers left out the dark ages to be reigned by myths and legends and concentrated their studies on the 9th century society. Kerala, like a one-man army, consumed this modernity capsule to disown their pre-9th century past. Under the influence of such discourses, dominating even history students today, I think that Tamilagam has little to do with their historical and cultural experience. Sangam literature is even hardly studied or taught in Kerala, probably with names sake exception of Malayalam literature students. Again, I mentioned this because I think this work is to go into redefine what is Tamilagam. This will be precious for Kerala people. This work will definitely be important, not only for Kerala people, but the people of Kannada, Telangu, uh, Pondicherry, and also beyond that, as you were telling, see, it has a kind of a relevance for Indian subcontinent because we need a balanced approach to our past and to understand in its wholesomeness. Palakrishnan employs multiple sources, ranging from legends to literary, archaeological, geographic, genetic, epigraphic, and linguistic to identify the deeper roots of Tamil culture. The onomastic sources, you know, we mentioned the place name sources, which he brings into the analytical desk. Even as an academic, I also felt they are a little superficial. But no more it will be considered as a shallow source, given the way he traces the Tamilagam names in the Indus Valley region and the migratory patterns he designs through geographical information system. Balagrishnan has provided a roadmap for future inter- and transdisciplinary research with far-reaching consequences. The integrated approach, insights of a lifetime hard work, embedded in this book will be welcomed, challenged, and taken forward by the scholars, students, and informed public. I join all present here to wish him the very best.